you know I'm rumor in the night, blinded by the light. Look like a deuce, you know the rumor in the night, blinded by the light. Look like a deuce, you know the rumor in the night, blinded by the light. A deuce, you know the rumor in the night. Sister with the mannequin, Mr. Hope, told me I got what it takes. Turn you on, son, it is something strong. Play the song with the funky break. Go Club Mozart was checking out the weather chart, see if it was safe outside. And little early Burley came by in his curly whirly and asked me if I needed a ride. And he asked me if I needed a ride, cause he was blinded by the lights. You know, you should have asked me if I needed some brows. Damn, these brows suck. Hey, y'all, welcome back. If you don't know me, I'm TK. And this channel is all about doing a little bit of makeup, doing some food, and having a lot of fun. And if that sounds like a good time to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there. And make sure you leave a like on this video. Okay, how are we all doing today? <laughs> I've had a great day so far. Yeah. Um, I haven't. I haven't at all. It's been a straight struggle all morning, but I think we're on. Uh, I think we're on a better track now. Today is music and mega Mondays. They were going to talk about songs that were released by one artist originally, and then didn't do too well. But then another artist did it, completely blew up. That there's so much more to it than just the song. It's the artist, the voice, the orchestration and the making it your own that they always talk about on, that they always talked about on American Idol, but never wanted anybody to actually do because they would criticize them if they did anything different with the song than what the original artist did. Go figure. And if you think it pisses me off, it kind of does. Also, before we go into our intro today, I just want to say, you know, no matter what we're doing in our life, we always have people that are kind of behind us. Even if we're doing something that's like, oh, I don't know if that's really for you, but there's always going to be somebody there that kind of is like, yeah, try it. You should do it. You should just at least give it a try. And you know that my niece, Mascaras and Mixers, she's always been, she's, she's just very supportive of me. And she's always right there, like giving me advice, giving me ideas, because I'm not an idea person. Um, but today I want to shout out, also shout out my girl Olivia for wishing me luck with this makeup look. And I think today I'm really going to need it. So thank you, Olivia. So if that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, then hang in there. We'll be right back. Let's talk about the makeup first. We'll get that out of the way before we talk about the music. So today we're going to try a look that is primarily black and then maybe bronze fall. I I'm not sure. I haven't. Uh, I'll show you the products, but I haven't quite decided just yet how we're going to do it. And if I come back in the middle of the video with literally another look, you know how that went. Primarily black. So obviously reaching for Life's a Drag and we're reaching for Shady right down here. She's my girl. She's my go-to, go-to black, the best black that I've ever used on any palette, full stop. I got my Aflo, Aflano Coral Orange because it's got some of those lovely bronzy, um, orangey yellow colors in there. These are definitely pressed glitters down here, so I don't know whether we'll use it. We might, might use that. If I need a yellow yellow, I'm going to be reaching for the Nomad uh, Tokyo palette, by the way. I think we're going to use three glitters today and they're going to be the elf ones these are liquid glitters and i absolutely love them uh i bought the whole entire vault can we use three glitters in one look i'm from the 80s so the answer is yes today we're going to talk about songs that were recorded by one artist didn't get to be a, a huge hit for that artist and then a second artist recorded it maybe close to the same time maybe a little bit later and completely blew up and I think what we're gonna see in these comparisons is that 
not everybody hears a song the same and it's okay to go ahead and put your heart in it to put your spin on it to do your thing with it individuality is important in music express personal expression is important in music let's get into talking about our very first um, tune fan of the biggest adult contemporary artist probably ever in the world and that's Barry Manilow his very first breakout hit the one that put him on the map even is what Mandy right everybody knows the song was originally recorded by one of its writers Scott English as Brandy I have notes over here so, so Scott recorded this song in 1971 when you hear it, you'll see that it's very different than what, um, if you know the Barry Manilow version of it, you'll see that this is very different than, than that. I remember all my life. It didn't do badly for him it, it got to be number 12 on the UK chart and um, but in the in the Billboard top 100 which is kind of how uh, for these three that we're gonna talk about today anyways we're just gonna talk we're gonna talk about the Billboard top 100 because for American releases that's that's your measurement but I will say um, not you know nothing to sneeze at being number 12 on the UK chart so um, Scott English didn't do badly with it, and that was in 1971. So in 1972, there was a band out of New Jersey called Looking Glass that released a song called Brandy, You're a Fine Girl, okay? And um, I think that that made it hard for Scott English's version of Brandy to continue to um, move on the American charts. So that song sounds like this. <laughs> On a western bay And it serves A hundred ships a day Lonely sailors Pass the time away And talk about that song sounds like and I think you probably you probably already know that song but I think that there was some ambiguity there between Scott English's song and then Looking Glass song and Looking Glass song was so popular but Barry Manilow he I mean he started a little bit he started out a little bit differently how he got his start and how this song became a hit it's a really interesting story but I'm gonna tell you this I'm just gonna tell you this and then you can look this up for yourself come back and Feel free to put stuff in the comments what you what you figure out but if you like the movie hocus pocus you probably have barry manilow to thank for it and that's all i'm going to say about that he heard mandy by scott english and was like i think i can do something with that but i'm going to do some other things i'm going to slow it down a little bit i'm going to modulate the fuck out of it and then i'm gonna and then i'm gonna release it so anyways his first take sounded like this and I thought it was great that he put this on one of his albums because it just shows the struggle that we've all been through and we've all been there as musicians let's take a listen twirling <laughs> 
Randy, take one. Mandy, Mandy sorry, take one. Oh, am I singing Mandy? Yes. Singing Mandy. Here we go. You'll notice that he mentions, he says to himself, I'm singing Mandy. I remember all my life Raining down as cold as ice Shadows of a man A face through a window Crying in the night The night goes into morning Just another day Happy people pass my way Looking in their eyes I see a memory I never realized you made me so happy or brand Oops Well you can And there it is oh, the whoops We've all had a whoops It's like okay we rehearsed it We we went over it and over it and over it and still whoops Ultimately that song became this song Obviously, if you know anything about the 70s, you know that that song was huge. Um, it went to number one on the Billboard Top 100, number one on Cashbox. Which then it went to number um, number one on the Canadian charts. Like it was just huge for Barry Manilow. It, it, it launched his entire career, his entire singing career. Um, Scott English said that he hated the Manilow version of that song. He said, at first I hated the Manilow version, and then I loved the Manilow version because it bought me several houses. Next song we are going to talk about is a song that was actually a pretty good hit for, for both artists, but it literally redefined the career of one of them. And that song is, How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? And I'll bet you, if I say, who is it by, you say, Michael Bolton. Just think. He didn't do it first. A singer by the name of Laura Branigan did. And I say a singer by the name of as if you don't know her because I'm not sure how many of you actually would. She was very big in the 80s and then her career kind of floundered in the 90s and then and in 2004 she passed away. I believe it was a brain aneurysm. She was like an early Celine Dion. I mean, she really had the pipes and she killed it on her vocals. She had a hit song with a song called Gloria. And that song was huge. And I can remember going to the skating rink. And every time with the skating rink, it was like they played Gloria. I know, the skating rink, really? You old fart? Yeah, okay. She was like a power ballad before power ballads knew what they were, okay? Laura Brannigan, How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? Her version of it was amazing. I'll play it for you now so you can hear. Leaving when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you So tell me all about it Tell me about the plans you're making Then tell me one thing more before
hear that. That's the sound of somebody that just got their feelings hurt. Badly. I mean, we could talk about the content of the song. Um, it's obviously somebody who was like, wait, what? You, what? I don't get it. You have a boyfriend? Girlfriend? Whatever. But I kind of thought maybe we were going to be, like, we're not going to be a thing. You don't sit there and lie. I think that that never happened to you. The song did moderately well for her. It wasn't as big as her, her other, it wasn't as big as Gloria. But that same sailing, you know, beautiful, like everything that she did was like that. Those huge emotional, like tear your heart outside vocals. Honestly, to me, she was like the queen of it. I know everybody, Celine, Celine. But Laura Branigan was doing it first. That doesn't take anything away from Selena. And, and I also want to say about this video, like this isn't to say one version is better than the other. Um, for me, there's room for all manner of covers of songs that I love in my playlists. Donny Osmond, I think, covered Mandy and a couple of other things that obviously I love by Bear Manilow, but I also love his version of them too. So 1988, Michael Bolton came along and he was like, I'm going to record that song. Um... And here's the thing about Michael Bolton, here's what kills me about Michael Bolton, is that he does the same thing with his voice. He puts that cry in there, that angst, angst in his voice. And it's amazing. And you're sitting there and you're listening to a song about somebody you don't even know and you're getting your feelings hurt. That's how Michael Bolton kind of hits you. He wanted to be, he wanted to be a rock band. And it kind of wasn't working out for him, except the hair. The hair was working out. But it kind of wasn't working out for him um, from his first album. There's a song in there called I Almost Believed You. And if you listen to that song, you will feel him. You will feel him. But the other songs on the album are just like hard rock type things. And then in 88, he came out and recorded. He says, I'm going to record How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? This was six years after Brannigan had done it. Man, he knocked it uh, TF out the park. So um, let's have a listen on that one. I could hardly believe it when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you. song a huge hit for him but it completely transformed his career this song went to number one he got a grammy for best male pop vocal performance which you can hear why but he's killing it he's killing it i don't know if somebody were to come into my place and been like oh i just had to come and ask you first like is this true and then they delivered a performance like that i'd have been like hmm Maybe it's not true. I don't know. <laughs> I can be fickle. It became the first new number one single of the 90s. And um, and it was literally a turning point for his career. He, he wrote that song. So I would imagine that was why his performance of it was just so incredible and why he was able to turn in a performance like that. Uh, he didn't write the song alone. He co-wrote it, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, that is How Am I Supposed to Live Without You.
Let's talk about the next one. So we've, we've been through two sort of gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching songs. So the writer admitted that he wrote this song just using sort of a rhyming dictionary. He, kind of, he wrote about things that were personal to him. Some of the references in the song are very personal to him and um, his life. But he, admit, he admits that he was just playing around the rhyming dictionary. We're going to listen to Blinded by the Light by Bruce Springsteen. Madman drummers, bombers, and Indians in the summer with a teenage diplomat. In the dumps with the mumps as the adolescent pumps his way into his hat. With a boulder on my shoulder, feeling kind of older, I trip the merry-go-round. With this very unpleasing sneezing and wheezing, the calliope crash to the ground. song and you're like that first of all that sounds nothing like bruce springsteen <laughs> and second of all that song sounds like a hot mess well i don't know about a hot mess it doesn't sound like what mo most of you probably know bruce springsteen to sound like but it does sound like early springsteen and it is early springsteen um that is off of his greetings from asbury park if you didn't know he's a new jersey he's a new jersey native um and a lot of his songs are about the beach life at, and not necessarily what you might think of the, the beach life, like, you know, oh, just lay in the sun all day. It's like, it's about just, you know, being in a small town and just kind of not being able to escape it, um, but wanting to and trying to. So a lot of his early work that, like, I'm talking about, like, probably pre-Born to Run is going to be like that. So he's saying madman drummers, bummers, and Indians in the summer with a teenage diplomat. So uh, Indians in the summer, that was the name of his like baseball team that he played on um, with the Indians. And obviously, you know, summer's when you play baseball. The teenage diplomat was referring to himself. With a boulder on my shoulder, feeling kind of older, I tripped the merry-go-round. With a very unpleasing sneezing and wheezing, the calliope. You you tell me another song that has the word calliope in it. That's not a name. If you don't know what a calliope is, it's the thing in the middle of a merry-go-round that makes the noise, that makes the, that plays the music. Nowadays, obviously, a calliope is going to be an electronic device, but back in the day, it was a little bit more of a mechanical device, almost like a player piano, if you can imagine. But yeah, this song's a bit obscure probably unless you're Springsteen he's the writer of the song by the way it was off the greetings from Asbury Park album he submitted that to the record label they were like we don't we need a lead single he wrote blinded by the light and spirit in the night for for lead singles they led with blinded by the light and it literally went nowhere the thing of it is I think that in the beginning, Springsteen had a little bit of trouble um, finding the audience because he is a genre unto himself. So before, obviously before, there was a John Cougar Mellencamp who brought sort of like blue collar rock to the forefront. Um, there was Springsteen and that's what he did. And he sang about his life. He sang about, you know, yeah, working at the factory and chasing the um the foreman's daughter and you know those kind of things like hanging on the boardwalk going to work every day wishing you could get the hell out of this town you know what i mean um but those themes weren't really they weren't prevalent it's not that nobody lived that life it was that those themes weren't prevalent in pop music um especially not when we're talking about like 1973 so obviously that's the advent of lots of your adult contemporary artists Anne Murray, um, Barry Manilow, Streisand, they were coming up and songs were very sort of like, um, 
they were a bit buttery, a bit uh, like a bit like peanut butter. They were all very kind of smooth and homogenous, and they had a particular sound. Nobody was. I'm not going to say nobody. There were artists that were doing, you know, um, like songs about sort of social issues and things like that. Fine. There's always been that every generation. But um, Springsteen wasn't writing about that. He wasn't writing about changing the world, you know. He was writing about his little, like, what what he was living, like his what he saw every day his life that he saw every day that's what he wrote about and he was friggin brilliant at it he was brilliant not only did he write about that stuff he took you along for that ride Springsteen had no hit no hit with his own song on his own album like kind of sucks when you think about it uh and it was lead single but spirit in the night totally different spirit of the night took off so that's Blinded by the Light. Most people do not know that Springsteen wrote that song. And even Springsteen fans don't necessarily know that he wrote that song. Song. And there's no deep meaning to the song. I mean, when you listen to it, you might think, what is what is he talking about? What is there's gotta be something more to it? No. Nothing more to it. But it perfectly lent itself to the treatment that it got from Manfred Mann in 1976. So we're talking about a three year difference. In 1976, Manfred Mann released Blinded by the Light. It's the one that everybody knows. Um, it went to number one on the Billboard Top 100. It went to number one in Cashbox. It lent itself to that more electronic treatment that Manfred Mann gave it. And so we're gonna listen to that for a little bit. Manfred Mann's version of it was probably just a vehicle and sort of a, a vehicle for amazing guitar solos, which I think are missing from music today. But I think also it might be hard to put a guitar solo into one of Ed Sheeran's songs. I don't know. I'm not an expert. So, Blinded by the Light, Manfred Mann. Um, that's the one that everybody knows. That's the one that everybody remembers. And um, as soon as you hear that, like, as soon as you hear that, like, electronic, that intro, you're like, blind by the light. You hear Bruce Springsteen and you're like, what is this? They almost don't even sound like the same song. Um, and I wouldn't say that Springsteen's treatment of the song is why it wasn't successful for him, but I would say, I'm not sure how you would actually classify his music. I guess nowadays you'd probably say, oh, well, he's classic rock. But back in the day of classic rock, when classic rock was being made, he was a bit outside. Okay, I'm gonna do foundation, blush, all that stuff. We'll come back and wrap up. Okay, we're back. Now, what did I tell you about those lips from Tattoo Junkie? Do not pay $150 for a glitter kit, okay? Just don't. Now, you know, I'm not gonna say the name of the company 
that I'm talking about, but it rhymes with Pat McGrath. Don't bother. Get the toppers, the lip, lippies and the toppers from Tattoo Junkie. You will not regret it. You will love it. I love that lip look. Anyways. Okay, so we're going to wrap up Music and Makeup Mondays with our number. The first song we talked about was Brandy, which was written by Scott English and recorded in 1971. Became a number 12 hit for him in the UK, but really foundered in the bottom of the top 100 here in the United States in number in 1972, Brandy, You're a Fine Girl by Looking Glass came out and kind of put a nail in the coffin for Brandy songs. It was a huge hit. But in 1974, Barry Manilow picked up Scott English's Brandy and re-recorded it as Mandy, which obviously blockbuster hit for him, launched his whole entire singing career and number one on the Billboard Hot 100, number one on Cashbox, number one on the Canadian charts. Huge hit for him. And Scott English was like, I don't like, I didn't like the Manilow version of the song, but then I did like it because it bought me a lot of houses. <laughs> so the second song we talked about was How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? Originally recorded in 1982 by Laura Branigan. It was a number 12 hit for her on the Hot 100 and She's moderate, it was moderately successful for her, except she had had bigger success with her song Gloria and even some subsequent hits. But then in 1988, Michael Bolton recorded it, who was the writer of the song, by the way, a co writer of the song, by the way. And he recorded in 1988, became a number one, number one, number one Billboard Hot 100. Um, the, he won a Grammy for Best Pop, Pop Male Vocal Performance. It completely defined his career at that point. He went from being sort of a fledgling, struggling rock band to being Michael Bolton, the adult contemporary artist. And he went on to record several, you know, similar power ballads in the in the 80s and 90s. Amazing body of work. The third song that we talked about was the quirky, slightly ambiguous <laughs> Blinded by the Light by Bruce Springsteen. It was written by Bruce Springsteen. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, even some Springsteen fans don't realize that he wrote it. Even though the lyrics hinted at rather personal things related to his life, just, just listening to them at face value, they don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And he himself admitted that when he was writing the song, he was just using like a rhyming dictionary. He was like playing around the rhyming dictionary. In 1976, Man For Man picked up Blinded By The Light. They did an electronic pop version of it. And it was a huge hit for them. Number one Billboard Top 100, number one Cashbox. It was cleaner, it was more in line with pop music at the time. And everybody knows it. This song is even so well known that it's parodied. Let's just have a listen to a parody that I found of this. Actually, this is a video, so it's pretty good. This is a... Another YouTuber, Trey Kennedy. He's amazing too. I'm gonna leave a link to his channel down in the description. <laughs> He's really funny. He does great skits, but this in particular just tore me up. Uh, let's check out Blinded by the White. You already know what it is. <laughs> this one goes out to all my white folks who don't even know how white they are. And all y'all who gotta deal with it. <laughs> Yeet blinded by the white. Hold up, is that crack it barrel? You wanna grab a bite? Blinded by the white. Hold up on my skinny jeans, and man, these things are tight. check out the rest of that video <laughs> it's really really funny um he does absolutely nail it yeah 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 i didn't know how white i was either until until i spent 1500 bucks on a dog you're gonna have to watch the rest of it to see that okay that's it for this week's makeup and music monday if you want to see this eye look again check out my foodie friday video this week because uh, i'm getting ready to go film the rest of that I hope that wherever you are, you are having a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, and a great night. And I hope that you're taking care of yourself. I hope that you're taking care of each other. 
be good, be safe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, y'all. Thank you.